Yo people, welcome to a new video. This is another translation of uh, Shader Toy Shader to Max. Uh, we made a bunch of those, but I think it's a nice exercise to go through those once in a while, because there's always some stuff proper to each shader, which uh, maybe we didn't encounter before, maybe it's something new, and always offers a challenge. So I think it's good to, to go through that and see how, how this can be solved. So you're ready to face each possible scenario you will encounter there in the wild. So, uh, this one is pretty straightforward, this was um, submitted to me from one of my patrons and apparently won some sort of uh, demo scene competition, so it's pretty cool, let's give it a look, it goes like this. And I'm not going to go through the code, because that's not the purpose of this video, this video is just about converting this shader to Max, so that it will play inside Max. So I'm not going to tell you how the code works, because I have no idea how this stuff works. I have just a general idea. To understand how this stuff works, you should actually check Matteo Marsen's video and Michele Zaccagnini as well, here on YouTube and uh, Patreon as well. So uh, let's go right to it. As you can see, this shader is pretty straightforward. It has a, uh, a texture input, which it uses to do some stuff, I guess. Um, and you know what? We can get this exact same image uh, in our computer by just Google, Googling. Shader toy uh, textures download or something like that. Let's see what comes up. Shader toy media files. And I hope this is not breaking some, any infringement stuff, but actually here we can find all the textures that are inside the shader toy. So there it is. We just go here, we save it as uh, pebbles dot whatever. I think it will save it as PNG, yeah, exactly. So cool, now we can use it inside our max code. Okay, so here we are with uh, the max patch, which is empty at the moment, and behind me, uh, and behind that, there is a Visual Studio code, which we're going to use to write the shader. So first thing we need is JIT world, because this is uh, OpenGL stuff, so we need a JIT world. And let's maybe enable it by default, and let's give it floating, so it's going to, the window is not going to disappear behind the patch, which is something which personally makes me really mad. So in this way, it's going always to be nice on top of the patch. Then what we need, since this is just a simple, uh, just one single pass, just a single shader file, uh, we're going to just use a GTL slab, sorry, not pass. And let's give it a file name. So we're going to simply call it Nova 19 shader toy dot JXS, something like that. This file doesn't exist, so it's probably going to complain that this file doesn't exist, of course. And then we need a GGL texture, which uh, we will maybe set to 1020, 1080 dimension. So it's going to be full HD. And uh, we then give it like type float 32. This could be nice. Uh, just, just to give it a bit more precision, although I don't think it's necessary, but maybe yes, you never know. So better to have the maximum precision, I, I think, than not. Cool that, and then we just project whatever comes out to the video plane inside Jit World. So we just see it here on our window. Nice, as full HD, so it's say 16 by 9 proportion. And let's actually read this Pebbles texture image that we just downloaded. So that's the folder uh, in which I put the patch, and there is also now the, the Pebbles image. So we can just read that inside this texture because this we're going to need inside the shader, so we're going to read it as Pebbles PNG, and magically it appears inside our window, because by default the shader is just outputting whatever texture comes in. So I'm going to take this shader, I'm going to go here in Visual Studio Code, uh, create a new text file, copy past the shader, this is the default shader from uh, uh, GGL's lab. Oh, I think you could not see that, but I just set the, the language here to GLSL, right? And this is the default shader. Now I'm going to save it as um, how did we just call? How did we just call it Nova 19 Shader Toy JXS? So I'm just going to save it like this. Nova 19 Shader Toy dot JXS, right? So if I now fetch my Max Pad and double click on Digital Slab. 
and delete and recreate the GGS lab and double click on it, it should open Visual Studio Code. Okay, perfect. Since this is the um, editor that I chose in the max preferences. Cool, uh, so this is the default code of uh, GGL Slab. As you can see, it's just reading in a texture and then all the, um, uh, the stuff to project this texture on a plane, which we're not interested about. So this is the model view projection matrix, texture matrix, position and text code. We don't care about all this stuff. I mean, we, we don't care because it's already cared for us by Max. What we need to care about is to modify this uh, fragment shader code. So that's the main function of the fragment shader. We are going to replace that with the code from the shader toy. So let's go into shader toy. I control A, uh, control C, or command, whatever uh, you Mac people uh, like to, to use these days. And then I go here in Visual Studio Code. And you know what? I take the main function, only the main function, I delete it or, or just control B and uh, paste inside the shader from shader code. Uh, it's not really formatted, so it's all messed up. I just double tab it just to get it um, the resemblance of order, maybe another time. So three times tabs. So three tabs for it. Just to give it a resemblance of order, but it's not really order. We don't really care about the code, right? We just care about translating it to max. If we just play it like this, I just save and then I go to max. It's just going to give me a bunch of errors because there is a bunch of stuff that is not declared inside uh, our code. It's just used uh, in Shader Toy. Shader Toy provides it. Um, when you write a code in Shader Toy, Shader Toy will provide you with some uniforms, some parameters, which uh, in Max we have to actually pro provide manually, right? So, for example, um, there is eye resolution, which is not uh, is passed uh, from Shader Toy, but we don't have it. And then there is this frag color, which is going to be our output. And in Shader Toy, this is passed as an um, argument to the main function, but uh, we don't, we cannot do that in Max. So what we have to do is actually set an output for our fragment shaders. This is the GL3, uh, this is GLSL3 uh, 1.5 syntax, which means we have to use out. We cannot just use GL color as an output. We have to manually declare an output variable. And this is going to be a vector for, and it's going to be frag color, right? And then actually the main function is called main. It's not called main image. We can delete the arguments because it doesn't take any arguments. And then one, something that we have to provide as well is the frag coordinate. So inside the main function, we can create a vector to call it frag chord. So these fragment coordinates are simply going to be the coordinates of the pixels or fragment inside, the, um, inside our texture. And normally, I will say that we should use JIT in text code dot XY, or actually is anyway a vector too. So JIT in dot text code. But you know what comes to my mind that maybe, and this is just maybe, I'm not sure Max provides us with this variable, but maybe we can use the GL frag chord uh, XY variable. This is like a built in variable that comes with GLSL. I'm not sure Max is actually providing it to us. Um, if it doesn't work, we're going to do it in another way, but uh, let's see, maybe it works because if we will use just, just the texture code, the texture code will be then dependent if our texture is rectangle 1 or rectangle 0. If the texture is rectangle 1, this text code that we pass in will be integers, and if it's um, rectangle 0, there will be normalized coordinates between 0 and 1. So this actually makes a big difference. So that's why I want to try with this GL frag code, because if, we, if this works, then we uh, don't have to change anything uh, else inside the shader code, because otherwise, we will have to adapt this UV to use uh, um, um, normalized coordinates instead of, U, uh, instead of dividing these by the resolution. Okay, but let's see. Uh, another thing we need to pass in is the eye resolution, which is basically the size of our window. Uh, in this case, it's the size of the texture we input in the shader. And for that, we can either use the viewport uh, by using the state viewport, but then we have to remember to basically change the dimensions of our textures according to the dimension of our window, which we can do. Um, so yeah, let's maybe do like this and then say default is going to be the 1020 by 1080. And this is actually a vector too, it's not a float. 
So I just modify this variable that was written in the default shader to be this vector two. Um, the viewport is going to give us the size of the rendering window in max automatically, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we just need to replace these uh, everywhere is the clear, the scale. We, we don't want the scale anymore. We want the eye resolution. And you know what? Let's go inside Max right away and uh, get the size of the uh, of the window of Max with the get attribute. And then we get this size thing. So it will give us the dimension of the window every time we resize it. And then we can prepend dimension and use that actually as the size for our texture in this way. In this way, um, when we use the viewport variable inside the shader code is always going to be equal to the size of the input texture, which is what we want. Which is what we want because otherwise the proportions will look uh, wrong. Okay. So um, inside the shader code, again, uh, what we want to do is to change the name of text zero to i channel zero. This is what uh, this is what shader toy uses for texture names. They're called i channel zero, i channel one, and so on. There are some mad kids screaming out of my window. Nice. Um, so we just take that and replace every instance of text zero that is in this code. We just uh, look for it with Ctrl F to see where this was declared. Apparently it was just here. And you know what? We don't want this uh, texture to be of type uh, rect, so to have integer texture coordinates. We actually want it to have normalized texture coordinates because that's the standard format in Shader Toy. All the texture use uh, normalized texture coordinates. So we just modify that to be sample 2D instead of sample 2D rect. And that's going to work. Uh, inside Max, then what we got to do is to set the rectangle attribute of this texture to zero because by default it's going to be one and this we don't want. And uh, cool, let's see if it now gives us some errors. And then we're going to proceed to fix them if we got some. So we just delete this slab and recreate it. And use undeclared identifier i time. Yeah, so i time it's another one of these built-in variables in shader toy that we don't have in Max. So what we're going to do is to just create a new variable. Just going to copy this param here and set it to i time. And this is of type float. By default, it's going to be zero. It's no problem. And then I'm just going to bind it. We need to bind it to the fragment program. It's all fragment program, right? We don't need to touch the vertex program at all because the vertex program is just going to draw um, a video plane, basically a rectangle on which we project our texture. We don't really want to mess with that. And then here we need to add a new uh, uniforms of float i time, right? And I guess this is going to be it. Let's go in our patch. Oh, what's going on here? So I'm thinking that this is probably because of we using G G uh, GL frag card. This is probably not really working as expected. So uh, let's do that. Instead of using JIT frag words, we use what I mentioned before, which is going to use the text code provided us from the uh, vertex program here in this uh, per vertex. Uh, structure so jit per vertex so it's going to come it's going to output from the vertex program this text code uh, which uh, transformed by the texture matrix and so on and then we're going to get them inside the fragment shaders so so that's what we're going to use and uh, in this case then uh, u would just becomes equal to the frag code because that's we don't need to divide it anymore for the size of the um, image actually and this part is for getting the correct proportion so i guess we could leave this on and let's take a look how it looks now it's okay it seems to be working so let's now animate that with the, the i time variable which we can provide by using g time and then we need to prepend Param i time in order to pass this to the shader code and now it's working now uh, you can see this as a, a bit of uh, artifacts which are uh, not really cool so if we take a look at the image here in shader toy we can see that it's 2400 by uh, 1350 this is the dimensions of this image so probably what we want to do is to set the same dimension. So let's skip this part and let's just hard code those dimensions in the image. 
So 2 for 113 50 I think I just said cool and now it looks much more high definition so let's actually go inside here and not use at all the viewport in the shader but just set this dimension so we say 2 for 100 by 30 50 right and now it works uh, nicely and we don't get any artifacts I think it's pretty heavy on the computer let's take a look to a look with which frame rate we are getting here and it's 3060, but as you can see, the computer is getting pretty hot. Uh, which means the GPU is pretty much under stress, but that's fine. That's why we got computers. So uh, that was it. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Just a couple of things to remember that if you are using a shader toy, mostly the textures inside are going to be rectangle zero. So you want to set rectangle zero inside the shader, uh, inside uh, your texture. And then also in the shader, we want to replace frag card with uh, um, cheat in text card. But then we need to delete everything that is uh, dividing this frag card for the high resolution, because in that case, um, uh, it's not going to work because these are already normalized coordinates. And here it's just uh, using that to get the, cor the correct proportion, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, this was it. I will share this patch on my Patreon. You will have a link in the description. Have fun, guys. Keep it easy. And see you soon. Ciao.